All right, we're back with the 2001 Street Legal WR250F. Probably one of the cleanest WRs I've ever seen in my life. Thing is just immaculate. I mean, you don't see a 2001 bike looking like this very often. So if you guys remember, a couple months ago, we picked this thing up for $1,600. The seller stated that he was riding this thing like eight years ago, I believe, and it locked up on him. And uh, he just rolled it in his garage, parked it there, and there it sat for like eight years. So I was thinking possibly it was a clutch problem. So we tore down the clutch side of the engine and took a look at that. And the whole clutch side looked great. No metal shavings, no broken gears, nothing. So that all looked good. We went to the top end, tore that apart, and found that it had actually dropped a valve. And the damage from the drop valve was pretty extensive. So it damaged the head, the piston, and luckily the cylinder and the crank were still fine. So rod bearing's good, crank is good. It was just the head and the piston that were chomped out pretty good. You can see, here's the piston, here's the valve that dropped. It was getting hammered between the piston and the head here. If you look close, you can see the damage of the head. And it was pretty bad. This seat in here was all damaged. But I was actually able to send this out to a friend of mine named Chuck, who I bought the RD200 from, the Takate 3 from, and the Ducati moped from. And he actually machined in the, uh, the valves. I bought all five kibble white valves for this thing, all brand new. So he machined those in, cut those in for me, and uh, cleaned up the head as best as he could. So the head should be good to go. We also got a new Weisco piston for it. That should match the cylinder perfectly. So today we're gonna to be rebuilding this bike, putting it all back together, and hopefully taking it for the first ride. That's the goal. So Chuck, the guy that cut these valves in for me, really nice guy, he came and dropped off this head, a cylinder, and a case he was working on for me. Dropped it off a couple days ago, and uh, helped me fix my skid steer. My skid steer had a broken hydraulic line, so he helped me take that off and get it fixed. And uh, he was over here, we were chatting about bikes, his collection, some machine work he was doing. Was always offering to help me, was always giving me advice. You know, he was super, super generous and kind. And uh, he actually ended up passing away four days after dropping these parts off and helping me with the skid steer. So unfortunately, Chuck is no longer with us. And uh, I think today we're gonna to be dedicating this bike to him and this build to him. So uh, let's get going on it and uh, hopefully we get a nice running bike from Chuck's work here. All right, so we're gonna start with the cylinder here. So this is actually a Nicocel plated cylinder. And in order to tell if it's Nicocel or if it's sleeved, you can use a magnet and see if it sticks. And with a Nicocel plated cylinder, magnet's not gonna stick. So I can show you the difference between that and one that does stick here. Leaved, and you can see it sticks pretty good. So this type of cylinder you can hone out. The Nicocel plated one, it's highly recommended that you don't unless you use a diamond hone. And you really have to know what you're doing with a diamond hone because you can go through that, that coating really fast and then your cylinder's junk. So. What a lot of people do, and what I do, is just scuff it up with a scotch brake pad and some WD-40. So what we're gonna do is take some WD-40, spray that in there, get our scotch brake pad, and just kinda scrub that. And it helps clean it, you know. You can still see the cross hatches in there. So now we can get the new piston set up here. So we went with a Weisco piston for this bike. 
Here are the rings. This piston, I believe, was over $200. Looks like it's going to be a good fit. Got the circlips here. And the pin. So everything we need. So we'll start out with the rings here. We've got our oil rings. First ring here. And you can see there's a little N on it right there. That means that it's going to be facing up. This ring is going to be facing up. And you can see the bevel then is on the top as well. But that's the first ring because it's that copper color. The second ring is black and a little bit thicker than the first ring. And that's going to have an end as well. That means it's facing up on the piston when you install it. If you don't face that ring up the right way, it will be scraping the oil up instead of down and your bike's going to smoke. So make sure you install those the correct way. So we're going to measure the ring gap here. We'll do the first ring first. See what that's at. Take the piston, push it down a little bit, and you can see that's a nice tight clearance there. That ring gap is pretty tight. We'll measure it. That looks like it might be 14 thousandths. Let's see if we're right here. It's actually smaller than 14 thousandths, wow. Might be 12 or 13, we'll try 13 here first. Uh, it's like between 12 and 13, it feels like. So that is a pretty tight clearance. Yep, 12. 12 slides right in. So that's a pretty tight clearance. 12 thousands for the first ring. Second ring going in, same thing. Push that down with the piston. And you can see right in there is the ring gap. That's probably gonna be 12 thousandths as well. Yep, 12 fits right in there. So nice and tight. All right, so we've got our piston here. We've got the rings installed. You can see the end is facing up on it, on the first ring. And then the ring gaps are staggered. So one is right in the front here, one is 180 out. And again, there's an N on the surface right there, the, the second ring. So that's facing up. Oil rings are installed, and you want those gap ends to be staggered as well, so that no oil can seep by and uh, have your bike smoke. So that looks good. Arrow always is pointing towards the exhaust side of the bike, so towards the front of the bike in this case. So let's oil this up. And uh, we've got one circlip installed already on this side, so we can push the pin in and get the other one installed once we get this on the bike. And the pin, before we install it, I like to go around every single ring here, make sure it's all oiled up. And then oil up inside of there. I like to rotate those rings. Make sure they're all oiled. Top of the piston, sides of the piston. Everything looks good there. That's all lubed up, ready to go. And then the cylinder, same thing. You want the walls of the cylinder lubed up here. A little bit of oil. You don't have to go too crazy, just enough to coat it. All right, so we've got our double pins in. New O-ring right on here. We're gonna be using a little bit of the ultra black gasket maker. And put that on the base before we put the gasket on. Helps it hold it down, helps it uh, Seal up a lot better, in my opinion. It's a thin amount on there.
on the rod here. So arrow pointing towards the front of the bike or exhaust side of the bike. And then we have to get the other circle clip in there. All right, the hardest part of the whole thing is probably getting the cylinder on. So chain has to come through here, cam chain. We've got to compress these rings, make sure they're the right direction here. Put the cam chain through later, I think. That looks good. All right, head gas going on. Double pins are in. Looking good. All right, so he machined in these valves per specific valve. So we're just gonna draw a picture over here. And we'll weigh out the valves accordingly here. That way we know where each valve is going to go. So we'll take these out of here. And we'll check out the work that Chuck did here. That one goes there. That one goes there. And like I said before, these are all brand new kibble white. I think it was like 200 bucks for the set of five here. I can see some metal shavings down in there still, so we're gonna clean this out really well. But uh, you can see how we cut the new seats in there. All the seats were cut to fit the valves perfectly. You can see this was all pitted before and uh, the valve was just crunched in there, so. That all looks perfect. All right, we got the old valve seals off. We're getting the new ones on here. So here are all the new ones. Right here. So we can press those on. Just a little dab of oil. A little harder to do. And what you can do is put it on a screwdriver like that. And then go like that. And it'll fall right into place. Get your finger down there. Can't have a super fat finger. <laughs> Otherwise it's not gonna work. Oil this one up right away too. Put it on the screwdriver. Put the screwdriver over the hole. Slides right into place. Okay, same thing. All new valve seals are installed. Got the valve compressor out here. 
going to compress this valve. You can see. And then we'll put the pins in here. The camera will come back once those are installed and we'll back off the spring and see if that valve holds. All right, all the valves are in, looking good. All the springs are in, brand new valve seals. Everything's looking perfect. Just gonna make sure everything pushes down. Yep. Everything feels perfect there, so. We are ready to install the head. Two shorter bolts go right here. Two longer ones go in the back here. I have washers, so be aware of that. Back on these as well. Head torque specs are 27 foot pounds. Crisscross pattern here. started All right, we're timing this thing up. Down here, there's gonna be two slits and then a slit right next to it on the right. You're gonna line it up with the single line on the right with the little groove right here on the stator cover. And then up here, you wanna line up the cams with the dot parallel with the surface of the head right there. And on this one, same thing. We took these out because we have to re-shim them. Um, right now, all these three shims are the same and we have to go a little bit bigger with the shims. I can fit like a, I believe it was a 12 thousandths feeler gauge in there, and it should be 5 thousandths, so we, we have to re-shim quite a bit. So right now we're doing that process. Um, we got the shim out of here. Here's the original shim. We measured that to be 1.66 millimeters, and right now the feeler gauge that fit in there was 0.308 millimeters, and we want it to be 0.127 millimeters. That's the spec. So in order to get the correct shim size, we want to subtract what we're at with the feeler gauge to what we want to be at. So this is going to be 12 thousandths minus 5 thousandths. It's going to give us 0.178 millimeters. And that's the, the size we want to add to the shim. So we're going to do 1.66 millimeters, the shim size we have now, plus this size that we want to add to the shim 
it's going to give us the new shim size of 1.856 millimeters. And we found a 1.9 millimeter right here. So we're gonna add that in and hopefully that fixes our problem. All right, I think we pretty much got these valves good. We're gonna test it out once we get the cam chain tensioner in. I wanna make sure that timing's perfect with the adjuster in. Stick a screwdriver in there, release the tension. There we go. All right, everything's rotating. Cam chain's nice and tight now. Make sure our timing's on here. All right, we're coming back to tap dead center here. We're at tap dead center right there. And we are perfect. So you can see that right there parallel with the surface of the head, and that right there parallel with the surface of the head. There, E right there pointing towards the exhaust, and you want these to be pointing up like that. So we are perfect for timing. Um, you can come and see the lobes are pointing straight out right there, and on this side as well, lobes are pointing straight out. See lobes pointing that way, lobes pointing that way. So we are perfect. We're gonna quick test the uh, the clearances, the valve clearances one more time. And uh, this top end's gonna be good to go. So we're testing five thousandths for this valve right here. You can see just scrapes. That looks, since that's the one we have that fits in there. Yep, that just scrapes in there. Those are perfect. You can see just getting tight at eight thousandths. Perfect. Perfect. So valves are perfect on this. Before we put the valve cover on, we have to hook up our decompression mechanism here. So let's do that. It's going to go through here. All right, I think we got it. I had to take off part of the radiator here. There we go. And that's just gonna sit like that. Shoot. Right. See if that works here. There we go. Perfect. And you can see what that decompression mechanism does is it pushes down that valve in there. See that? And lets out compression. So compression isn't as high. Not a whole lot of room to work with. <laughs> Let's put that up over there. All right, that looks pretty good. The bolts in. All right, let's put the clutch back on. Get a water basket going on. Washer goes on there. Inner hub goes on. Lock 
washer nut. I'm gonna torque that down. So there's a spring boss in here. That's what it's called. And you want to do that concave up. So you can see there's a little concave to it. Concave down would be that way, concave up. So cone facing up like that. And there's a flat washer behind that one. Doesn't matter which way you put that. All right, clutch plates going on. All right, start off with the friction plate here. Now we've got our ball bearing that goes in, just like that, and then that goes in like that. That goes on. Our springs, and our bolt. All right, gasket going on. We gotta get a little grease on there first. It'll help hold it in place and it will prevent it from sticking when we take it off. Okay. One right here. There's the oil filter, that looks perfect. I'll put a new one in. So here's the brand new one going in. washer that goes on like that Impeller just screws on just gonna put a little grease in there this is gonna go right in here
All right, taking a look at the carburetor. This thing's really gross. We're gonna let this sit in the ultrasonic cleaner before doing anything with it. You can see it's pretty gunked up. Not looking too hot, so. We uh, will let that sit, and we've got all the jets over here as well. Pilot, we've got the main jet. I can't see what they read because they're so gunked, so we'll let these sit for about an hour, along with the floats here. We also got a new accelerator pump diaphragm kit we can install. This one's pretty brittle. All right, we got the carburetor pretty clean. It's nice and clean on there. And the bowl sat in the ultrasonic cleaner for, I think it was 30 minutes. Everything is clear there. All these ports are clean. This was completely clogged. That goes into the side of the carb. Um, all these jets are clean and good to go. So let's install the new kit, the new accelerator pump kit. New one goes in like that. And then on the cover, we got right here. And this one goes in there. Just like that. Now here's the new one. That goes like that. Got your spring. installed looking good all right carburetors back on we got the gas sink back on I put a little gas in the gas tank and uh, the carb was not leaking at all um, accelerator pump was working when we tested it so that should make for easier starting and better performing machine so that new kit worked out great let's get some oil in it next this thing takes 1.7 quarts filling up through the frame here let's get the dipstick out of here And we'll fill that guy up. We're using 10W40 wet clutch oil. 1.7 quarts going in. Make sure our drain plug on the frame is good, yep. A little bit more. That should be good right there. All right, so we'll get the dipstick back in. You can't really check it until your bike is warmed up. But we can just quick see how much oil's in there. You can see it's all the way up. But that will suck it through the engine once we start this thing up for the first time. Get connected all the lines. <laughs> all right, it's topped off. Put your cap back on here. Let's get some gas in it.
bike is all done, looking really good. Hopefully it starts up right away and runs as good as it looks because it is looking really sharp. I mean, this thing is just spotless. So, we will see. Hopefully those valves seat. And we don't have any leaking valves. And hopefully this thing fires up. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. Choke it. No go. We gotta see if this thing's sparking. All right, I just assumed this was sparking. I can't remember if we checked it last time. I don't think we did because we couldn't turn it over. But now we can check it and see if it is sparking. Does not sound like it. Plug doesn't look that wet. Hmm. Now we're getting fuel. Let's see, let's see if you guys can see the spark. Getting good spark. So that is not the problem. All right, let's try this again. We know we have spark. We know we have fuel. Hopefully we have enough compression. Nada. I'm a little worried about those valves seating. <sighs> huh. Feels like it has good compression. I pull the compression release in and it's really easy to kick over. I release it and it's hard to kick over, so. I don't know, really weird. We're gonna try putting gas directly on the car. See what happens, even though the accelerator pump's working.
new goo. All right, I'm officially sweating trying to start this thing. Let's try to bump start it, see if it'll go. We were able to bump start it and it sounded pretty decent. Um, I think the jetting might be a little bit off. It almost sounds like it's a little bit lean to me. But um, yeah, it, it ran pretty good. Went through all the gear, shifted nicely. But as soon as we shut it off and tried to start it again, it won't start. I tried using the hot start, nothing. So I'm thinking something's maybe wrong with the valves. Maybe they weren't uh, seating all the way when uh, Chuck machined those out. I'm thinking maybe they're a little bit off. Alright, you fired up with kickstart.
All right, so I can bump start this thing every time, and it starts up every time. But uh, last ride, it kind of sounded like it was popping a little bit. And then we'll do the leak down test to confirm the valves are, uh, are sealing. All right, let's see what the plug looks like. This will tell us how it's running. Looks like it's running pretty lean. So that could be part of the issue. Looks like it's starting to turn a little bit brown, but that should be brown already. Hmm. So, let's just see what our spark looks like. Just gonna quick kick it over here. The compression lever pulled in. Make sure we don't have a full plug. We shouldn't, because it starts with a really good spark. All right, let's get the compression tester in, see what we get. All right, compression tester going in. We should have well over 100 PSI, since we don't have the automatic decompression lever on here. We have the manual one. So we should get a pretty good reading. All right, here we go, throttle open. Looks like we're a little low here. We're at 110. Yeah, 110 PSI, that's pretty low. This thing should be a lot higher than that. It should be over 150. So that could be our problem. All right, we're gonna do a leak down test with it. So what we can do is put like 20 PSI attached to this hose into the engine when it's at top dead center. And we're gonna see where air is pushing out of. If it's pushing out towards the carb, that means the intake valves are out of spec. If it's pushing out through the pipe, that means the exhaust valves are opening and tight or out of spec. If it's pushing out of the radiator, it means that the head gasket's blown. So you shouldn't see any bubbles forming out of the radiator. Um, it should be tight. And then if you hear it coming excessively out of the engine, the case is over here, that's pretty normal. But if it's super excessive, that means it's rings that are being worn. So let's get like 20 PSI in here. We'll get this thing to top dead center and see where that air is blowing. Compressed air here and we'll see what happens. You can hear it come out of the air box. So intake valves are leaking. Make sure we're at top dead center here. Yeah. Hear that? Feel air coming out of there. Nothing out of the exhaust. Exhaust is fine. So I think it's that one intake valve that Chuck tried to repair. Um, it's not sealing correctly. What a bummer. You can see we're at top dead center right there. So everything's good, everything's perfect, and I just checked the valves and they're not tight, so we know for a fact that that valve is not sealing to the seat. Yeah, you guys can hear that. So, looks like we have to tear down the whole thing and have it resent out. Unfortunately, 
<laughs> uh, what a bummer. So it looks like we can't go any further than that. Well, unfortunately, that's where we have to end the video for today. We have to take the head off, get that resent out, get that machined properly to the valve, and hopefully that will solve our problem. Um, I, I'm guessing it's that one intake valve that was that was damaged that you tried to cut, and uh, I'm sure it didn't seal properly. So we'll have to get that redone, and that should fix our problem for sure. Everything else was good on the bike. Bump started really easy, so once we get that valve fixed, it should be in tip-top shape. It's a really nice bike, so so we'll get this thing finished up next video, and it should be good to go. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video, and until next time, we are out.